Ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated and welcome again the President of the American Geographical Society, Dr. Marie Price. Good afternoon. I'm so happy that you're hanging with us. This is a really wonderful part of uh, Geography 2050. Um, we welcome you to our award ceremony. Uh, Professor Ariola, Professor Brewer, distinguished participants of the American Geographical Society Fall Symposium, counselors, fellows, faculty, friends, honored guests. We're pleased you're joining us. We will present two medals today, the Paul P. Voris Medal for Exemplary Research conducted in the field of regional geography to be presented to Professor Daniel Ariola, and the O.M. Miller Medal for Outstanding Contributions to the Field of Cartography or Geodesy to be awarded to Professor Cynthia Brewer. The Society awarded its first medal in 1896, and no, I was not at that ceremony. Since then, nine medals have been created and nearly 200 people have received this honor. Harkening back to another era, the medals were created to recognize excellence and were awarded to individuals who expanded geographic knowledge through research, exploration, pioneered new geographic technology, and used geographical thinking to influence policy. Many medalists are from the United States, but over half are from other countries in the world, including Brazil, China, the United Kingdom, France, Canada, Mongolia, Germany, um, and um, did I say the United Kingdom? Yes. Through the awarding of medals, AGS has recognized astronauts, explorers, cartographers, inventors, researchers, and world leaders. The Paul P. Voris Medal was created in 1988 to recognize research in regional geography. Our recipient, Daniel Ariola, has written prof prolifically and compassionately about the southwestern United States and especially the borderlands. And any of you who have known uh, Professor Ariola as long as I have, you're likely to have been on a field trip with him on the US-Mexican border. He has no doubt taken hundreds of people down to the border to experience that important place. The O.M. Miller Medal was created in 1968 for outstanding contributions to cartography and geodesy. It was named for one of the AGS uh, staff cartographers who served for 46 years in our mapping division. Prior recipients include Arthur Robinson, yes, of the Robinson Projection, and John Hankey and Brian McClendon, who were the uh, um, creators of Google Earth. And by the way, Dr. Brewer is the first woman to receive this medal. The first award will be Paul Voris Medal. I now ask Professor Ariola to join me and call upon Dr. Deborah Popper, a previous recipient of the Voris Medal and now chair of the AGS Honors Committee, as well as Dr. Tucker to join me so that we can present the medals. Deborah. Thank you, Marie. And I have to say it is my honor and pleasure as chair of the AGS Honors and Awards Committee to read our honorees citations of recognition. So let me begin with Dr. Ariola's. In the last few years, the complex and conflicted relationship between the US and its nearest neighbor to the South has been achingly apparent. Numbers of hopeful people massed at the border awaiting decisions on whether they would be led into the U.S. or what would happen to them once here. That borderland has been the site of enormous pressure, hope, and hostility. The meaning of that line that separates one country from the other signifies differences that are undercut by the actual history and ongoing exchanges between peoples on both sides. It is imperative to understand this borderland and the region beyond, and for that we turn to Daniel Ariola. His books and articles explore the long-standing relationships that bridge the border, illuminating cultural nuances, similarities, differences, acceptance, and resistance on the parts of individuals and groups on both sides. Ariola's careful field work 
and manuscript searches have given us a well-documented and accessible portrait of place. He has relied especially on postcard documentation, a way to take us back through time to recreate the sensibilities that prevailed. He has pushed back at the flattening of experience that, as he writes, treats Mexico's paired cities as simply an extension of the American town. Engaging with Professor Ariella's work is like walking through these places and at different points in time, listening to the conversations, noticing who's there, what they're doing and feeling, how they are seen and seeing and being. His method and interest come in part from the way he grew up. He writes, when I was being raised by maternal grandparents in Santa Monica, California, my mother's father, Leon Diaz, an immigrant from hard scrabbled Jalisco, Mexico, used to take me for walks around town. He loved to tell me stories as we rambled, describing the things around us. That attention to the world had a shaping influence. In later years, as an undergraduate at UCLA, I met Kit Salter, who rekindled that wonder about places. I'd say it is the wonder, the curiosity, the familiarity, and also the pace, the ramble, that allows such astute observation. Ariella sees the Mexican influence and the Anglo influence and is not deflected by the few who, by virtue of their power or money, get to determine a place's narrative. Now Professor Emeritus, Dr. Ariella spent most of his career as professor of geography at Arizona State University. He has authored four books, edited another on the diversity of Latinx experience, published numerous book chapters and articles, many for the Geographical Review, which we certainly appreciate, served on the editorial boards of journals, including the Geographical Review and Annals and Professional Geographer, North American Geographer, been editor of Pacifica and Aula Architecture and Urbanism in Las Americas, Grants from the NSF, National Endowment for the Humanities, Fulbright, and the American Council of Learned Societies have supported his research. His books have won prizes, the AAG's J.B. Jackson Prize for Tejano, South Texas, and the Southwest Book Award for the Border Region Library from the Border Region Library Association for the Mexican Border Cities. CLAG, the Conference of Latin Americanist Geographers, gave him the Carl O. Sauer Distinguished Scholarship Award in 2003, and then the Preston James Eminent Latin Americanist Career Award in 2016. He has participated in important cross-border cases, testifying and joining Amicus Curiae in the borderland civil rights cases, Rodriguez v. Schwartz and Hernandez v. Mesa, cases of Mexican youth shot in Mexico by border patrols in the U.S. We need his clear portrait of this critical region. Therefore, for these reasons and more, on behalf of its grateful members, worldwide scholars, and all who recognize the importance of excellence in geographical research and exploration, the American Geographical Society pre presents the Paul P. Boris Medal for exemplary research conducted in the field of regional geography to Daniel Ariola on this, the 22nd day of November in the year 2019 in New York City. Congratulations to Daniel. And now, can I ask you to come please say some words of wisdom for us? Thank you, uh, Deborah, uh, herself a recipient of this award, uh, and uh, the members of the AGS uh, Honors Committee that uh, thought that Ariola deserved this, I guess. And I, I, I was dumbfounded uh, six months ago when Deborah contacted me about this prestigious award. If I'd really been thinking, one of the things I would have done is to bring the logo that I used on the syllabus for my border class for almost three decades at Arizona State University. Some of you might remember Escher's drawing of drawing hands. Uh, and the logo that I have was adapted by somebody quite sharp. They took Escher's hands and they laid them over the US-Mexico boundary. 
But what they did is they put a pencil in each hand, and then on the cufflinks was a U.S. flag for one pencil and a Mexican flag for the other pencil. And the American flag hand was actually drawing in the borderline on the one hand. It was very specific, drawing the borderline in. The Mexican hand, on the other hand, had the pencil upside down and was erasing the border. <laughs> The American Geographical Society and its Geographical Review have been instrumental in my professional experience. I owe a special gratitude to the late Doug McManus, who during his long tenure as editor of the journal, mentored me through several early publications in its pages. Editors Paul Starr and Craig Colton are also thanked for their roles in my short publication history with them at the helm of the GR, as it's affectionately known. Among geographical writings, very likely the clearest association of the name Ariola with regional geography is my monograph, Tejano South Texas, which Deborah mentioned, and then my edited book, Hispanic Latino Places. Each of these works, arguably, uh, may be classified regional geography. When it comes to writing regional geography, my model and inspiration then as now, remains the comprehensive regional explorations of Donald W. Meinick, especially his Imperial Texas, an interpretive essay in cultural geography, and Southwest, Three Peoples in Geographical Change, 1600 to 1970. These succinct monographs with their elegant prose and thought-provoking maps filled with those so-called Meinickian arrows remain in print almost five decades from their initial publication, certainly testament to their salience in scholarship. For many years, I imagined my research charter being a simple tack between regional cultural channel concerned with Mexican-Americans and an urban cross-current concerned with the Mexican border. Sometime in the mid-1980s, while on the faculty at Texas A&M University, I received a small grant to explore the urban landscapes of Monterrey, Mexico, then the third largest city of the Republic and historically one of the major industrial centers of the country. I had completed doctoral dissertation research in eastern Mexico in the city of Veracruz to understand its uh, 19th century uh, geographical past as a gateway for foreign travelers. As part of my background exploration for Monterrey, I contacted Professor Samuel Dickin, then emeritus at the University of Oregon, because Dickin had published several papers about northern and northeastern Mexico in the late 1920s and 1930s, including Monterrey. Knowing Dickin was a Berkeley PhD and having some understanding of how C.O. Sauer's students steered clear of urban subjects, I asked Dickin why he chose Monterrey to investigate. Curiously, Dickin told me that he never considered his analysis of the city an urban project. Rather, he said, it's regional geography. Years later, I launched my work along with colleague Jim Curtis to map and understand the geographical identities of Mexican border cities, 18 centers, large and small, that, that abutted the international boundary region, which I believe then had largely been neglected by serious scholarship in geography. That decision stimulated a personal journey to study the historical geography of border cities. That work is ongoing. To date, I have completed three of four volumes about the towns along the border, based largely on a reconstruction of their visual past, using my extensive private collection of historic vintage postcards to understand how these changing townscapes uh, occurred between 1900 and the 1950s. Alas, and in retrospect, like Sam Dickin, I cannot say with conviction that my works have been traditional regional geography. Rather, they have been a kind of regional study of places, especially their changing personalities through time. More a set of cultural landscape explorations than an empirical analysis of the areas as regions. In that spirit, however, and in the spirit of this prestigious award, I take some comfort in the words of another one of its past recipients, uh, John Fraser Hart, who so eloquently announced in his now famous 1982 presidential address to the Association of American Geographers that regional geography represents, quote, the highest form of the geographer's art, to wit, 
This is Hart's word. The idea of the region provides the essential unifying theme that integrates the diverse sub-disciplines of geography. The highest form of the geographer's art is the production of evocative descriptions that facilitate an understanding and appreciation of regions. Regions are subjective artistic devices. Regional geography must be informed by a sense of time. Effective communication is a difficult and demanding art that regional geographers must master. I find this thesis rather compelling because Hart's concluding observation back then was that the frontiers of regional geography rest in our cities. I guess I was on the right path all along. Thank you very, very much. So now let me ask Professor Brewer to come out ah, and join us. Thank you. Okay. So, when your name as brand becomes the default for your area of expertise, you know you're at the top of your field. Cynthia Brewer owns that claim. Anyone putting together a digital map is likely to turn to Color Brewer to select the color palette for the categories. And so the AGS honors her professor of geography at the Pennsylvania State University with the O.M. Miller Cartography Medal. The ubiquity of maps and mapping enabled by geographical information systems has made her contributions especially critical once the province of a small, highly trained cadre, cartography is now instead practiced by the many. But many of that many lack the highly developed sense of the best way to convey their data. That's where Professor Brewer comes in. She knows what choices have to be made and which ones accurately, effectively, and attractively make the point. And she generously shares her insights. As Wired Magazine reported, if you see someone surrounded by a gaggle of admirers at a cartography meeting, you'll probably find Cindy Brewer at the group center. Her popularity derives not just from her knowledge, but also from her willingness to share. As they write, she's surrounded precisely because she has devoted much of her career to helping other people make better maps. Her Designing Better Maps, published first in 2005 and then a second edition in 2016, is a model of explaining how to produce good maps. All her books share these qualities of clarity, authority, attractiveness, and accessibility. She has authored and co-authored a wealth of peer-reviewed and other publications and cartographic design resources, generating more than 4,000 citations. She's an active member of cartographic associations, including as president of the North American Cartographic Information Society, and she served on all her field's editorial boards. Brewer has made major contributions to our national maps, consulting for the U.S. Geological Service, the National Park Service, the National Center for Health Statistics, and I could keep going. All of these producers of important national cartographical materials. She was an affiliate faculty at the U.S. Geological Survey Center of Excellence for Geospatial Information Science. She designed the full 2000 and 2010 census maps and co-authored Mapping Census 2000, The Geography of U.S. Diversity, which won the National Association of Government Communicators Blue Pencil Award for Excellence in Government Communication. And her co-authored Census Atlas of the United States won Best Show in Map Design Competition from the Cartography and Geographic Information Society and the AAG Globe Book Award for Public Understanding of Geography. Among her many other awards, perhaps one of the most in interesting is that of the U.S. Geological Survey's Henry Gannett Award, uh, in which recognizes her exceptional contributions to topographic, map topographic mapping in the development of new symbology for the U.S. topo. In conferring the award, 
They noted, Dr. Brewer developed content and symbols for online devices and printed topographic maps with various display sizes and resolutions for a range of scales from one to 5,000 to one to million. Her innovations in the use of color, symbols, and generalization are now embedded into USGS standards for generating the nation's civilian topographic maps. So I can say that we can all safely say that Dr. Brewer has left her mark all over the map. <laughs> we all benefit from the way in which Dr. Brewer has shared her powerful cartographic and analytic ability paired with her tremendous aesthetic sensibility to create exceptional maps and tools of mapping. Therefore, for these reasons and more, on behalf of its grateful members, worldwide scholars, and all who recognize the importance of excellence in geographical research and exploration, the American Geographical Society presents Professor Cynthia Brewer with the O.M. Miller Cartography Medal for outstanding contributions in the field of cartography or geodesy on this second day of November in the year 2019 in New York City. Congratulations. And now, please say, also, share your with them. Thank you, Deborah. It's humbling to have you research me so well. <laughs> She's a researcher. I, I looked at the uh, award background and noted that O.M. Miller was a cartographer, but also started a surveying program. And so I wanted to add that my one of my very first summer jobs was a drafts person for the local surveyor in my town. And we would go out on Sunday afternoons and try out the new laser theodolite equipment he just got. It was quite fun. Um, and also, as Deborah noted, Arthur Robinson is a past awardee amongst the many others that I'm honored to join. Um, and Arthur Robinson is my academic grandfather, in essence. He was the advisor to my advisor, Judy Olson. And Judy Olson, a uh, professor at Michigan State, was a, really an inspiration and a guide for a lot of my research. Um, the, the color brewer work that um, Deborah noted, it was really fun coming up with that name. Sometimes in an, I'm in a cafeteria line at a conference, and someone will look at my name tag in the middle. Brewer, oh, oh, Brewer, I get it. <laughs> okay, what are we talking about? <laughs> um, so, but that work started when I was on sabbatical at the Census Bureau in 2000. And Jim Fitzsimmons, are you still out there? He hired me to uh, do an atlas with Trudy Sukhan of the census data, the decennial census data in 2000 that was coming out. And then Alex Tate, two sessions ago, was the, his company did the production on the second atlas that we did. Um, Axis Maps, Andy Woodruff, who, who um, leads Axis Maps, keeps the programming fresh on the Color Brewer online tool. So really part of a, a real enthusiastic community, and, and I like to keep that going as I introduce my students and, and young faculty uh, to, to people at conferences like this. Um, Charlie Fry is out there in the audience who I've collaborated with at Esri, and he, he was an initiator of some of my first thinking about a book with Esri Press, and also he's pushed to get the color brewer schemes into ArcGIS Pro, so they're in there now, more readily usable right in your software tools. Um, I think overall, between designing better maps and my work through scale and with generalization at the US Geological Survey and with Color Brewer, I'm trying to make my cartographic theory, color science accessible to people to make good quality maps. A good, a well-designed map, you look right through it at your data, at the patterns in your data, at the distributions. It's not, it's, it's letting you see that pattern. And so uh, I'm pleased to have helped people. It sounds like I helped people <laughs> to, to do that. And uh, I'm just honored to receive the Miller Award. <laughs> 